Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today, we will be looking at the Snapfast Plus 1973 Plymouth Cuda by AMT Ertl. Now this model kit belongs to my wife. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1973 as we get to take a look at AMT Ertl's Snapfast Plus Plymouth Cuda. Now this is a scale level one kit, which is excellent for the beginner model builder. Although it does not include an engine, it does include a lot of highly detailed parts. There's also this very cool Plymouth Cuda collector card to be added to your Snapfast Plus card collection. And now let's take the lid off this amazing model kit to see what's in the box. Under the lid, you get this great instruction sheet and a decal sheet. And then we get all our different parts in here. There's our chrome, and then here we also have our glass and our body and everything else. Now this model kit originally was my wife's, so she did start to work on some of it, like this differential here, and uh, put the wheels together, but not too much, not too far out of just what is in the box normally. Here's the great fold-out instruction sheet, which is easy to follow, and if you do it step by step, it's going to make you a star. Step one is the tire assembly and wheel assembly. In here we see how to paint our rims. The holes are flat black, while the inner part here is aluminum. The chrome would be on the ring and the cap and bolts. And then over here it shows how the wheel goes into the tire with just a simple press in and fit. The metal axles are carefully applied by using a hammer to tap them into the wheel. Make sure you have these nice and aligned straight up and down, otherwise you will have a crooked wheel. Step two is our chassis assembly, which is very simplistic. We have the chassis pan, which has holes in it for the metal axles to go through to connect our wheels together. And then you simply drop on the rear suspension and springs, as well as the drive shaft, and you are done. Step three shows our interior assembly, and it is a straightforward assembly with a bucket interior. We've got two bucket seats that pop into place, a shifter lever which drops into the center console, the instrument panel, and our steering wheel. Step four shows our body assembly, and it does suggest painting inside here with flat black. Then you put in your two headlights, your bumper with the overriders, the license plate. Out back, you just put in your license plate, and there are some rear tail lights that are in here, right there. Our bumper and our rear rocker panel go in, and then the grill pushes in from behind. Step five shows our final assembly with the glass going into the body, followed by the interior, and then our chassis. And it's all held together by screws with a Phillips screwdriver head. Although this is a skill level one snap together kit, don't let that fool you because this body is really highly detailed. There are some sink marks in it, however, which are a little bit tricky to work with if you're a beginner. But if you're a more experienced modeler, you can always fill those in with putty. Now take a look at this nice door handle. Looks like the real thing. Again, we've got our side marker lights on here, which are very nice. Up front, you get that grill detail, which of course you will have to paint with a flat black. The hood is very nice, very flat. It does have some sink marks here, which are uh, correspond with underneath here on the pegs. So you will have to use a bit of putty or cross sand them and see if they'll go away. Out back we've got the two taillights with the CUDA emblem on here, which is very nice. The chassis is really amazing in this model kit in the fact that you get all this nice detail in here. It would be very nice to actually paint this and then paint in all the exhaust pipes as well as the engine in a separate color. Mostly underneath was body color, but you could always add in the flat black as undercoating. And if we turn it over, it is very simplistic underneath. Not too much to be worried about as far as mold marks and sanding them out goes. But again, very excellent work for such a simple model. Our interior would end up looking really nice with some paint on it. As you can see here, this is the area where the engine would take up if there was an actual engine and opening hood in the kit. However, there is not. Our interior includes automatic style pedals. And then in the sides here, there are some nice details. The center console looks really nice. 
The rear bucket seats look good, but there are two big mold marks right here where my fingers are, which again can be filled with putty and easily sanded out without hitting the seat and eliminating that detail. There are some speakers in the back package shelf as well, and again, this will end up looking really nice. This is about the extent of the additional parts, but they are really well done. We do have the two bucket seats, our dashboard, our steering wheel, our front pan, and the grill inserts, as well as our drive shaft and the rear axle, which includes the leaf springs. Here you can see the nice detailing in the dashboard. Those gauges would paint up really nice. And if we look at the bucket seats, there are no mold marks in here, and they look really well. Our rear pan even includes the two trumpeted exhaust pipes, which stick out of the back. Now we take a look at our chrome for a 1973 Plymouth Cuda. And as you can see, there's not too much going on here. This would be the first year with the overrider bumper ends on it. And we do get the headlights, and there's our little shift lever right there. The detail on the hood lights is quite nice. Make sure that you do have them going north and south, east and west, and not at a 45 degree angle when you install them into the car. The clear plastic components in our kit are very straightforward. You do get the rear window and the front windshield connected with these bars in between, as well as some red taillights in the back. Here we have the parts that will assemble our chassis and our wheels, and that of course is the body mount screws these nice chromium metal axles, which are guaranteed never to rust. Then we have our tire and our wheel insert. Now my wife did put these together, so I'm showing here the front with, of course, our rally wheels in there, which she did not paint up. But anyway, there's our back end here with the back of the wheels. And we have these tires. They are generic. They do not say Goodyear or Firestone or anything, but they are really nice and do have a very nice tread pattern to them. So again, these will look really good on your Snap Together model kit. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet. And here, as you can see, you get a choice of either black or white racing stripes for the side of the car. Choose one or the other. And then down here, we have Connecticut Fish B8 as a license plate which if you read this fast, the little joke in there is fish bait. Then we have these Georgia license plates, if you don't want a comedy style personalized plate, for 631278. Finally, we have Mopar magazine license plates, which you could use on any one of your other Chrysler model kits. And that completes our look at our 1973 AMT Earl Snap Fast Plus Plymouth Cuda. Now, if you've built this model kit in the past, please share it with us on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great unboxing video of the AMT Ertl Snapfast Plus 1973 Plymouth Cuda. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building.